What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be rebuilding the Honda GX270. This is a Honda GX270, which is a nine horse. This is the same thing as a 301cc Predator. If you remember this motor, we had it on the street go-kart a pretty good while ago. The only reason we pulled this off is because we needed a 420 on the channel. And uh, so I went to Harbor Freight, picked up a 420, and we put it on the street go-kart, and then we've been a valve. Uh, great job, Red Bridge Garage. But uh, this one just needed some jet work. It needed a bigger jet in it. Uh, I believe that was a problem. It just was running lean or rich. I can't remember, you know, I can't remember which one it was, but uh, I think it was running lean. But we have a problem. I was gonna sell this engine because I wanna do something different. Uh, I was gonna actually try to buy, I believe I was gonna try to buy a, another 670. Anyways, I was trying to put a header on it and the exhaust stud broke. Both of them was stripped when I tried to get one out. This actually cleared the uh, the threads out, so I'm gonna have to re-tap it. And this side, it broke off clean in there. I've tried everything. I've tried to, you know, use an easy out kit. I've tried to weld a, you know, a glob of weld. I kept building up weld as it got out of the head. Then I welded a, a nut to it. Still, um, no luck. So what we're gonna do is pull this head. I'm gonna take it down to a machine shop in town in the morning and see if they can remove that. Uh, because if I can pay. You know 20 bucks to get it removed it's better than buying a 35 dollar head so that's what we're going to do and we're going to put some 35 pound valve springs in it uh when we're done because the governor is removed on this motor so all we have to really do is pull this valve cover so we can pull the push rods out and then we can take the four head bolts off and uh carve and all that good stuff so let's get started and it's got a brand new uh, coil on it from what i remember put a lot of new parts it's got a new plug new coil brand new carburetor which is probably well it's actually pretty decent yeah it's actually still really clean uh there's probably gas still left in this tank but uh what i'm gonna do is clamp off this gas line these are harbor freight vice grips and uh i do not recommend them that's for sure they're like those are trash they should be in the garbage why do i keep things like this i don't know no gas came out, so uh, that's a good sign. With that throttle rod. This carb is actually really clean, so we'll be able to reuse this. We'll go ahead and pull the insulator off and the gaskets. Uh, I got new gaskets coming for this. But there's really nothing wrong with these gaskets. Uh, we can actually reuse these. Goodness. Ooh. But those valve covers uh, probably never been off this engine. I should have checked the valve lash back when we did this engine on the uh, street go car, but of course I didn't. There's actually little pieces of metal in there. That's definitely not good. So one thing you can definitely tell the exhaust valve is leaking because uh, there's quite a bit. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you. So if you look in this head, there's quite a bit of of like soot built up around the exhaust valve this thing was most definitely leaking uh, on the exhaust valve so probably had low compression so we're probably going to be rebuilding this while we pull this head off uh, it would be a good thing to get this head worked on but if i hope you can see that that soot build up there is a good shot of it so it was definitely uh, had a valve leaking that's for sure so i'm going to go ahead and pull these rocker arms off uh, i think it's a it is a 10 and a 14 or 13 maybe let's try 13 no not 13 she's a 14 and i think i actually have a, a set of the heavy duty valve springs already for this motor i think i bought them just in case i was ever going to do something with this engine In every Honda, there's a lash cap on top of the exhaust valve. Uh, the intake valve does not have a lash cap. One push rod. 
another push rod. See if the old porter cable will break it loose. Nope. 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 Oh, we got one out of four. That's pretty good odds. So let's see if we can break this thing loose. Got him. There's a side cover bolt bolted to the head. My bad. My bad. Hmm. Okay. A lot of bugs and uh, soot. A lot of bugs and soot in this head. Head gasket doesn't look like it was ever leaking. I mean, it doesn't look like nothing bad up here, but we know that exhaust valve uh, right there was was definitely leaking. You can tell that's a brand new spark plug, by the way. Brand spanking new in that thing. And it's an NGK. That's the plug to go with. Yeah, there's a there's a rough spot on the the cylinder wall. A good, this thing's definitely gonna need a good honing out because, uh, I mean, it's the walls are slick. Of course, there's no cross, uh, Yeah, so basically, we're going to give this thing a good home, probably some new rings, and we're going to find out where those metal pieces came from that was inside this thing. We're going to drain the oil and strain it uh, just to see, you know, kind of what we're working with on this thing. Oh, yeah. The oil is clean, but it definitely looks like there were some metal pieces in it. I mean, yeah, look at that. That is insane. Let me focus the camera out because uh, you're gonna wanna see this. You see that? All that metal fragments on my finger. Let's see. That's crazy. It's pretty bad in the bottom of this engine. Go ahead and remove that cam. Everything's so hefty in these engines after working on a 212. Uh, you can definitely tell you upgraded. That is a lot of metal pieces. So definitely like a lot. I mean, there's a, a ton of sludge in this engine. Let me uh, clean my hands up. I want to show you inside this thing because uh, it is pretty bad. I just hope the camera is picking this up. That's, I mean, there's tons of that, tons of it in there. So now I'm gonna pull this, uh, this rod and piston out to see if the damage is coming from it. It's just very strange how much damage there is. Everything looks good on this, though. The, the rod isn't, you know, chewed up. The sides of the rod really isn't. The piston rings are fine. That was another thing I thought it was, was the piston rings, but they're fine. So really, before I just dropped this piston, it was okay, but I would have probably, they, these pistons are extremely cheap. But yeah, so we'll see what the machine shop says tomorrow. I mean, this thing is definitely gonna need a good honing. But hopefully we can revive this old engine, make her push some power. We'll, we'll see what they say in the morning. Okay, so it's been a few days since, you know, we was talking about this old head with the exhaust stud broke off in it. Well, after making that video, I thought I'm definitely going to spend more at a machine shop to get that bolt out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this head and mess with it some more on my own time and see if I can get that out. But for now, I went ahead and bought a brand new head for like 35 bucks and that came with a new head gasket, new valve. So that was a much better deal. We got a brand new head so we need to hone out the cylinder and then we can put the stock piston back in the stock piston is in pretty good shape i mean there's nothing wrong with it really so we can throw that new that stock piston back in throw the new head on and also once i get all the the piston everything put back in i'm going to pop the flywheel off and i'm going to do a eight degrees flywheel key so we can get a little bit more 
power out of this thing. Put a little bit of oil on my little honer. A link is in the description for this puppy on Amazon. They're really cheap. I think this is like $15. Maybe cheaper, maybe more. I can't remember. Uh, I always use just a 10W40 or 30 weight. Just, just something to, to use on these engines so you're not dry honing them. And uh, you can use pre or engine assembly oil, but I prefer just use some some Napa 1040 or, or 30 weight. And pour a little bit. Of, oh gosh, that was a lot of it. Now, if your drill has some settings, I always turn it on low and try it first. Now, like I said, I'm gonna make sure I get my little sanding pads. You know, all down. And then go on to uh, honing this puppy. Now I wipe out the cylinder. You can see that old, you know, like old buildup inside there. You can see the cross hatch. Uh, that I put on that cylinder wall. I think that's pr the correct way to pronounce it. But, so it's ready for the piston to be installed now. So we'll start on that. I'm gonna pre-oil everything. Make sure, always when installing the piston, you make sure the, the gaps on the rings are not lined up. There's an arrow on these pistons. The arrow goes down. And then of course you want your your little oil rod to be pointing down as well. So the piston will go on the engine just like that. If you notice the top ring gap is straight up and then the, the next one is right there. That is way too close to each other. So I'm just gonna rotate one on the opposite side of the engine and then we're gonna look at the little oil scraper and find the opening on it. And it's actually lined up. So we're just gonna take both the rings and turn them away from that. Okay, so we have the ring squeezer on the piston. I always let the ears of the piston hang out a little bit. Then I'm gonna turn the crankshaft so the rod isn't gonna hit it. We just lay those ears in there. Make sure to get this pretty darn tight if you can. Uh, tight as you can. Now we're just gonna take the end of the hammer, the handle, because it being wood. Bam, she's in there. Uh, the links to this ring squeezer will also be in the description below. I actually found this one at a yard sale for like a dollar. Never been opened either. You don't wanna dry torque your bolts, so make sure to dip them in oil. Uh, it just gets a more accurate torque as well as it doesn't want to break your bolts. Just going to use a ratchet wrench to snug these uh, rod bolts in. Now we're going to torque the rod cap down using a 10 millimeter uh, six point socket. Now I, my torque wrench is inch pounds. It's 10 foot pounds is what the torque is so that's 120 inch pounds. I'm going to start off with uh, probably about 85 inch pounds and then work my way up to 120 uh, you don't want to just jump to to 120 you want to do them evenly you know going back and forth that's 85 now I've already scraped this old head gasket off uh, pretty good now we can install the head back on there and finish this thing up this is a really simple process people overthink these engines are they're, they're very simple they're really nothing to them you do one or two and you get more comfortable and uh, you know they're nothing after you do got a few under your belt now we're gonna throw our head gasket on and before we can put our new head on we need to lap our valves so we're gonna lay our head upside down on the workbench so the uh, the combustion chamber is pointed up. We're gonna get some 
valve grinding compound. Now this size tub will last you a ridiculously long time and this is really cheap. Our head did come with new valves and you really can't mix them up. They're two completely different sizes. So you got a large one and a small one. The large one is intake and the small one is exhaust. So how we're gonna lap these valves is we're gonna take some valve grinding compound. It's just like liquid sandpaper. You can see uh, if that's focusing the glitter, put it around our actual valves. Just gonna take our valves, rub the edge in it, make sure we get enough on there. All right, we can go ahead and drop that one down into the uh, into its spot. Do the same thing with the intake. Just put you a coat around it, and we're going to drop it into place. In the description below, you'll also find links to this valve lapping tool. It's just basically a stick with suction cups on it. You want to suction cup onto the valve. And take it back and forth you'll hear it hear the sound you know smooth out where it's sealing itself and what you're doing is creating a really good surface between the two and matching them so you're not going to get any leaks around your valves which would make your com your compression low and then your engine's not going to want to run Basically that valve is sealing so well, I can't spin it anymore. Make sure to clean every bit of that valve grinding compound off the valves and the head. Make sure to get every single bit out. I always use some uh, Q-tips to get down in the hard to reach places and some brake cleaner. You can see that nice shiny lip around there. Uh, that thing is ready to be put in. So now we need to pull out everything out of our old head. Uh, these are the older style valve springs. They don't have the keepers on each side, so they're a lot easier. So there's the uh, intake valve. Now the exhaust valve on these Hondas has a lash cap, but the intake side does not. I'm gonna use a little magnet to take that lash cap off. So now I have that lash cap. I'm gonna make sure to clean all this stuff because it was pretty dirty in this engine. Now on this valve retaining cap, we just push down and move it to the side. I can pull that old spring. You can hear the valve fall out. Now we're going from the stock valve springs, which is here, to the 35 pound heavy duty valve springs. If you look closely, you can see a size difference. This is the heavy duty 35 pound, that's the stock. So we'll get, you know, we won't float our valves at higher RPMs. Now I'm gonna need to pull everything out of this head, including this spark plug. This is a brand new NGK spark plug. I need to pull these uh, carburetor studs out by putting two nuts backed up against each other on the end there and then I can thread them out. I've showed this in plenty of videos. I'm also going to be taking off this little heat shield here and putting it, cleaning it really well, putting it on the new head and uh, the rest of the stuff out of here. So we got our head all dressed out other than the carburetor studs. We'll, be, we'll do those once the head's all mounted on the engine. So we're just going to slide this on and we're going to make sure we dip our head bolts in oil so we're not dry torquing them. I'm just going to snug all these head bolts up. Now we're gonna to wanna to torque these to 300 inch pounds and that would be 25 foot pounds. But like I said, my torque wrench only goes up to inch pounds. So we're gonna start at about 100 and work our way up from there. All right, this is 100. Like I said, keep working your way up about 10 to 15. You can even do 20 inch pounds at a time and uh, until you get to 300. So we got the head all torqued down. Had to go actually buy me a new torque wrench that went up to 900 inch pounds. That was much needed. Now I just need to put the, uh, the rockers on and adjust the valves out. But first we need to finish up. Before we can do the head, we need to put our tappets in that's what touches the cam lobes and then of course put our cam back in and get it all in time i'm going to clean this up because this engine if you remember at the first of the video it had a crap ton of metal shards in it don't know why 
but it had a lot and I've checked everything out and everything looks good so don't understand why it was like that but I'm gonna clean the cam up and get it all put back in and this will be going on the Murray that has the uh, the liquid combustion technology six and a half horse on it so this should be a pretty good upgrade but first we're gonna mess with some gearing on it just to get a little bit more power out of it okay so the cams in the tappets are in the counterweight you can leave this counterweight out but uh, if you're not running high rpms it smooths the engine out so i put a bead of gasket maker around this thing and i got the side cover all cleaned out now we can put this thing back together and uh, then we just got to put all of our valve train back in and set the valve lash these big blocks have seven bolts instead of the normal six like a 212 does so i have the engine at top dead center you can find these charts all over the internet to tell you the intake and exhaust lash the 270 stock uh intake lash is 0 0.006 give or take uh, a thousandth of an inch and then the exhaust is 0 0.008 so eight thousandths of an inch so i'm gonna do exactly that six and eight okay so sometimes when you tighten down this outer lock nut it'll tighten the uh, valve rocker down too tight so you got to play with this and learn you know where to set it so i tighten that up a little bit and it it tightened this up so much that i can't move it so we're going to want to back that out of here so the filler gauge is tight but not too tight and not too loose let me set that lock nut and see now i can't move the filler gauge out but before i set that lock nut it was uh it was fine so i'm gonna back off the inner nut still the same thing and there we go we have perfect amount of tension and we can move on to the exhaust like i said this engine's on top dead center so that means the pistons at its highest point and no valves are open whatsoever if i snug that up you can see i can't move my filler gauge there we go that's too much that's too tight So after we do this, we always want to go back and check and make sure everything is good. Now I'm going to give it one more tighten. They keep these pretty tight, but you definitely don't want them working their way loose. So there's the intake at six. Here's the exhaust. The exhaust is really tight. Let's see how... It said minus or plus a thousandth of an inch, so seven fits in there good, so we're golden. I meant to order a new valve cover gasket, of course, I forgot, so we'll have to make do with this one. It shouldn't leak any pressure or oil out of it, we hope. One thing I always do, I have no plug in this, by the way. That's the highest location, then I retest it. Pull the engine over a couple times. Give it one more test. So six on intake, bam, seven on exhaust, bam, we're golden. Now we're putting the valve cover bolt back in. We can put a filter on that later. Uh, now we just need to put the spark plug in. It's already gapped. Uh, one thing I'm gonna have to get is some exhaust studs. Because like I said, the other head had a broke off exhaust stud. And I'm going to have to pull those uh, carburetor studs out of this head. Alright, so I'm going to check the, the little screen, the little filter that's in these gas tanks. They all have a little filter sticking in there. Probably going to put a new one in it just to make sure this thing ain't all clogged up. You can see all the crap in this flywheel cover. Take the coil pack off. 
these flywheels always are on there pretty good you got to take the nut off that'll remove the fan and this little screen right here this just keeps dust and uh, like twigs and stuff from building up in these fans what we're going to do is cut every other blade off on this fan that'll be less drag on the engine it does uh, prevent less cooling but it's not enough to really hurt it so we're going to take our 10 snips and do every other fin be less drag and also put the eight degrees advance timing key in there So if you notice, I drilled a hole in my workbench there. That's for the crankshafts to slide through. There we go. Now you're gonna to wanna to take a pry bar, stick up under it. Be careful not to crack your case, uh, not to crack your block when doing this, but just hit right there and it'll, you know, and push down on the pry bar at the same time. There we go. She just released. Seems dangerous, but it's perfectly fine. There we go. Now we can inspect this. This is a true Honda flywheel, so this is gonna be way stronger than like a Predator flywheel, but these are still prone to break. But we're not running high RPMs, like 5,000, 55 is the highest we're gonna run this, so we should be okay. So now make sure it's a good, clean surface, and we're gonna swap out the key on the crankshaft. bam got it so you can see this flywheel key is flat and solid and this flywheel key is notched you want the notch part the open part facing towards the carburetor now when reinstalling the flywheel since that key is notched we want to make sure the flywheel is rotated towards the back of the engine on that key we want it sitting all the way against it so we make sure that we're properly our timings advanced properly you can kind of look through the keyway like I said rotate that all the way towards the back of the engine and you should be okay all right so this took freaking forever because my Dremel for some reason the little sanding uh, circles kept busting on me but I cut every other fin off and I grind them down pretty smooth. Uh, this is plastic, so that's the best the Dremel would do. So this has a little nipple right there and this does too. Sets right in there and that little nipple sets. So now we can smack this bad boy on there. Remember to rotate the flywheel all the way towards the back of the engine where your kill uh, switch line runs or where your electric start would be if you have one take and zap that on there and that should push the fly flywheel on enough that the you can take the boat off now and everything the flywheel shouldn't fall off should now I'm gonna check that key to make sure it is rotated all the way now we can put all this right back on and torque it down to spec all right, so I'm just gonna zap this bad boy on there with a impact and uh, hope for the best. That thing should not come off anytime soon. Now we have that all put back together. We can put our coil pack back on. We're gonna need our feeler gauges for this, of course. And there we go gap is set now we can throw our side cover back on and we're almost almost done with this puppy come on baby there we go now i gotta take this heat shield off the this head so the only thing left we have to do is pull these studs off and put on the carburetor side, the intake side of the head. And then I still need to run to the parts store and get some exhaust uh, studs as well. Well, we got that Honda all ready to go. We actually put a 40 series torque converter on it and I'm waiting for the little air filter adapter from Go Power Sports to get here so we can install it on that Murray Explorer. 
If you remember that Murray Explorer had pretty much a Honda clone six and a half horse and it just has hardly any power. The engine runs fine and everything. It's just we could have re-geared it, but we got a 72 tooth sprocket and it wouldn't fit on the axle due to how it's set up on the frame. Uh, the 72 tooth was going to interfere with a bunch of stuff. So we decided just to throw this 270 on there and that should be a huge power upgrade. It'll be nice to be able to show you how much more power it is from going from like a Predator six uh, and a half horse up to a 301 cc let me know what you think about this engine build i hope it helps you guys out these engines are really simple a lot of people overthink them and get nervous but really just buy you a cheap predator they're cheap enough to experiment on and that's the perfect way to to learn engines is these small uh, honda clones make sure to check out all the links in the description below we have all the links to all the stuff we use in this engine build so you can pick those up and start building engines of your own and make sure to go to go power sports and use that discount code redbeard to save 10 percent on all your go-kart and mini bike needs couldn't do this show without them so make sure to help support them because they are helping support your favorite youtubers guys we got a ton of builds going on right now so be patient with us we're pushing out some videos uh very soon that i think you're going to be really interested in so make sure to throw us a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't hit that notification button so to let you know as soon as i upload a new video and go check us out on facebook instagram and snapchat where we're putting pictures of everything out before they come out on the channel so you can stay more up to date uh, working on a lot of stuff around here guys so we have a lot of content coming to you guys thank you for all your support we're almost at 30,000 subscribers and remember at 50,000 we're going to give away a go-kart so uh, tell your friends help share the channel so we can grow even bigger and do even bigger builds guys always come back to redbeard's garage i'm out